<clears throat> Announcing voice. Ready, set, go. Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I have some nice, slightly dead flowers to really spruce up the back. I think it gives the vibe we're going for. I feel good about it. I hope you do too. Hi, welcome back. Today, I, Kat, am gonna tell you about something that you're all very hot to know about. It's two topics, actually, not just one. I'm giving you two for one. Firstly, how I rate my books, what my star rating system is, and secondly, how I annotate those books that I read. We're gonna start off with ratings, and then we're gonna move into annotating, and then the video will be over. My star rating system, like anyone else's, is incredibly subjective, one of a kind, that bitch. Five stars, uh, the top dog, real hard to get in this land. Obviously five stars encompasses favorite books. Sometimes a book is just objectively that good and I feel like it needs a five star. For example, Girl Made of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake, Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, two books that I think are just so, so good and that everyone should read. But then there are also books that touch me in a more personal way, that mean something to me. These are the ones that I break down crying about on camera. These are the ones that I will never truly be able to explain why I love them the way that I do, not even to myself. Radio Silence, obviously. Sleepwalking by Meg Wolitzer, that's a more recent one that we haven't really talked about yet on here. They resonate with me. They made me feel seen. They, as the kids say, hit different, and they get five stars. Four stars are books that are great, they're impressive. Maybe they're even favorites. It's not impossible for a four star book to be a favorite in my mind. If you go on my favorites shelf on Goodreads, you'll see a couple of books that I gave four stars on there. For example, Bunny by Mona Awad, or I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. Those are two books that like, didn't quite get five stars, but I still think about them to this day, pretty much daily, and they stuck with me in a way. Can I necessarily explain in words why I didn't give them five stars? No. Could I probably have given them five stars and still been able to sleep easy at night? Yes. But in my mind, it's better to rate low and then upon reread to step up than the other way around. So I tend to go on the lower side just to be safe a lot of the time. That's very, very negative of me, but it's, it's the truth. Then we have three stars. These are the books that are average. They're solid. They did what they came to do. Maybe they didn't do anything more than that, but they did what they said they were going to, and I can vibe with it. Three stars, for me, for the most part, are books that I just felt were like, good in the most basic sense of the word. The other side of the three star category is the books that I feel a little bit more mixed on, that there were approximately equal things I liked and things I didn't, like Sorcery of Thorns by Mar Margaret, Margot? Margaret. Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson, and then I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver, that's another example, where I liked some stuff, but then I was like, not so sure about other stuff, and it's kind of a mixed bag. And so I kind of just slap a three on it and walk away, because I don't know how else to handle that. Then we have two stars. These books are not the worst, but they're not the best. Maybe there were a couple of things I liked, or something that I can say, I get why someone would enjoy that. Maybe it had like a redeeming quality or two. Maybe it was just bad, but it was a fun time. <clears throat> Serpent and Dove. But as a reviewer, I'm sitting here going, eh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, so two stars are, I wouldn't say they're outright bad books, but they're also not good books. And then we have the one star. On my very professional and well thought out script, I just wrote fuck em, lol. So that's good, and that really sums it up. These are the books that I hate, the books that I could sit here for hours and tell you about in detail, why I think they're garbage. These are the books that would get a rant review if I felt so inclined. These are the books that get more time than they probably deserve in the wrap-ups because I have a lot of emotions and I have to let them out some way. This is just my outlet. That's a one star. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. These are the bad books. Okay, now we move on to annotating. Every time I post a picture of a book on Instagram and it shows that I've been highlighting or sticky tabbing or doing something of the sort, there's always one person who responds and goes, what do those mean? And I'm like, well, fun answer. 
They mean nothing. Why I annotate isn't necessarily for any reason other than the fact that I review books and so I need to remember the thoughts that I have while reading them for my wrap up or my Goodreads review or my rant review or whatever. And so whenever my brain starts to do that pesky thinking thing, I pick up a pencil and write it down and it's just too much work to have a separate notebook. I just want to write on the book, okay? I just want to write on the book. And if I bought it, I don't care about that personally, so that's, I, I do it, you know? I've separated this into three questions that I normally get. The first one's about sticky tabs. Color coding, what, do I do it? No, I hate to disappoint you, the colors really don't matter. I almost laugh in the face of those of you who think that I am detail oriented enough to come up with a color coding system and then stick to it. They're really just there to mark where I've written something. For example, here's my twilight. Let me come close to you, I'll show you. Like if you were just to pick one of these at random, it's just to mark where I have put words and things. I only switch up the sticky note colors on the side because I love the chaos of all the colors mixed together. The secret is that there is no secret. I'm so sorry, I'm disappointing you. Second question is, what do you write with? Um, recently, I've been really vibing with pencil. I'm not opposed to pen, blood of your enemies. I write just in highlighter sometimes only when I'm in a real pinch, but it happens. One time I wrote in a colored pencil because that was all I had. Last question is just the question. What do you write, Catherine? What could be so important that you feel that you have to record it while you're reading a book, while you're reading someone else's work of art, masterpiece, whatever. It also doesn't really matter. I write whatever I think will be important later, most of all, especially if I know that the book is going to get some kind of video mention, whether it be in a rant or in a regular review or in a uh, wrap up, like, but I want to talk about it and not just say, hey, I read this, look at that, ooh. If I have a thought while I'm reading and I think it's a good thought, especially if I think it's a good thought, there's like a 95% chance that I'll forget it in three pages. So I figure, hey, let's just write it down so that if I have to review this or just when I wrap it up, it'll be there and I'll be able to relay it to you. Sometimes though, it's not even stuff that I think is gonna be important. It's just stuff. Characters acting like a fool, mark it. Sentence structure I think is whack, mark it. Um, it can also be something that's like insanely petty, like that one time that I counted the number of M dashes in A Court of Thorns and Roses, or the number of times the word bewildered was used in Fifty Shades of Grey. Mark them. There's no rules. There's no rules. The cool thing about annotations is that no one's gonna see them except for you because you own the book. Don't write in library books. And so um, it, you can literally be as unintelligent as you want and no one's gonna know. I'm not writing dissertations in my margins. You don't have to either. Literally half of my annotations are just me making bad jokes or insulting the characters that I hate or like, I don't know, being boring and just marking the lines that I like because words are pretty. Yeah, I mean, so that's it. <laughs> Have a thought, write it down, slap a tab, move on. How I annotate. So um, that's all for me. That's my whole document. Got nothing else for you. I hope that my answers were at least somewhat satisfying. Um, Cause they're all I've got. Um, before we go, a brief message from the sponsor for today's video. With Squarespace, you can get a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. You can stand out in any inbox with Squarespace's email campaigns. The all-in-one platform makes it easy to unify your brand voice from your homepage to your emails. Refine your email strategy with real-time campaigns and website analytics from one source. You can learn what content leads to higher engagement and track metrics from send to sale. You can also add online booking and scheduling for your classes or sessions to your Squarespace website easily. Clients can see your availability and reschedule if needed, taking the hassle out of coordinating calendars. If you go to squarespace.com for a free trial when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash paperbackdreams to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. You can find that link in the description. End of sponsor ship part. Back to the video for an outro that I don't have. Okay, that's it. I don't have an outro. Thanks for... Okay, bye. <laughs>